Coming up on today's show, we'll be taking you through the February releases, including Argyle, The Iron Claw, Madam Web, and more. And we'll be telling you how you can treat yourself and someone special for Valentine's Day. And we're celebrating sci-fi season with re-releases of 2001 A Space Odyssey, Interstellar, Blade Runner, and more. Welcome to What's On at Cineworld Cinemas. I'm Luke Owen. And Barton Men Don't Lie. I'm Dan Layton. He's decked out to the nine in merchandise. The Holdovers was the best film I've ever seen in my life. I loved it so much. So look, I'm representing. We're just going to deal with it and move on. Do you know where I love to be? Go on. Cineworld. Uh, and that's yeah. where we are at the moment. We are down here at the O2 to go through the movies released this month in February. That includes Madam Web, mm -hmm. it's got Argyle, yeah. and it's got a few other spicy bits and bobs for us to go through. It's a big month this month. And it's half term. And it's not, well, I mean, they, there we have it. Yeah, so the kids will have loads to go and see. Let's go and talk about what's on. January was such a packed month. Oh there's, yeah. There's still a few things that are on yeah. that you can go check out if you miss them in January. Things mm -hmm. like Wonka, which I really, really I mean, enjoyed. Wonka's a legacy. It was back in December. That's actually that's December release. 2023, no less. If you haven't seen it by now, yeah. you've still got a chance. And it's, it's, a lo it's a lovely trip to the cinema, is Wonka, so highly it recommend. really, really is. Uh, mean Girls is also still yeah, just out, as well. Just out, yeah. And Poor Things. Oh, I mean, and we're now into full Oscar season, right? So yeah. full Your favourite time of year. I uh, love it. It's my favourite season. Um, it goes, it goes awards, summer. Um, <laughs> Christmas. I, Christmas, yeah. <laughs> because you don't do Halloween. Nah, <laughs> the Halloween can leave itself. No, uh, Poor Things is uh, uh, just nominated for several awards across the board, uh, richly deserved. Um, there's actually a, an exhibition of the costumes on in London at the moment. So it's yeah. a, a, very, a very good choice if you're going to go to the pictures. But if you want to see some new releases, maybe you've already seen those three movies. Like, I need something, I need something new. You want to know what's next on the horizon. Absolutely. And kind of away from Oscar season, yeah. I would say, Matthew Vaughan is back with Argyle. Yeah, I am proper excited about this film. We actually watched the trailer just before we started recording this. And it's... I mean, it looks like Kingsman. Yes. For, for, yeah. you know, it's a Matthew, it's Matthew Vaughan, Vaughan in every way. It's Matthew Vaughan. Like, even the logo is yeah. very Kingsman-esque. Kingsman's, like, all over the branding of this movie from the director of Kingsman, the people who brought you mm -hmm. uh, Kingsman. And it feels like the next evolution of a director who made Kingsman. Yeah. So it's basically premises uh, a, a author of crime novels, author's a bit too close to the sun, and uh, kind of gets on to something a bit real and thus is caught up in that crime, they, you know, extravaganza. They still say like, oh, she's a bit of a Nostradamus yeah. as a writer. She is writing things that are actually happening. So yeah. they, the baddie, Brian Cranston, mm -hmm. wants her to write the next chapter and write the next book so that or he almost knows what the next thing to do mm. in his evil master plan is. And it's a fantastic cast. You got uh, John Cena, Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard, Catherine O'Hara, Dua, Dua Leapers yeah. involved. Uh, Samuel Jackson. Dripping in kind of production design glamour the argyle sweaters all over the branding it's it's absolutely it, it's matthew vaughan all over and yeah. i love a matthew vaughan movie especially at this time of year i also i'm going to give a bit of a bold prediction go on i think there's going to be a big cameo reveal of who argyle is because <gasps> that's kind of the tease you get at the end of the movie it's like you're about to meet the real argyle i think it's going to be a big shocking surprise like do you have oh, a name in place uh, uh, Michael Sheen. Um, I'm going to go with Oprah Winfrey. And that's going to be the big reveal. So I think you actually really want to go to the cinema to see yeah. this. So you can go see what that reveal is. Bit fun. But if you're looking to entertain the kids, probably wouldn't go take them to see a Matthew Vaughan movie because I reckon it'll be a little bit violent. But Migration is out this week as well. This is a fun family movie mm. of a group of ducks yep. who accidentally, during their migration, get stuck in New York. Or New a, York. A, certainly a, 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 a version of... A big city. A version of New York. And then it's a, a, a duck out of water, if you will. Hello. Um, there's some good jokes in their trailer as well about duck a la orange. Yeah. What is that? Well, it's you a la orange. Yeah. And then finding their way back home. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's got that kind of Madagascar energy. Has that it? illumination the, energy. Yeah, it's it's it looks like a, a fun, as you say, family watch. Uh, but there are a few giggles in there I had while I was watching the trailer for it. Also, fun fact for you: it's the first animated movie to be shown in Screen X. Huge. That is interesting. Yeah. That will be a lot of fun, especially with the whole. There was a lot of flying a lot of going you know that, that was the surrounding of that because we watched it in 40x yeah. so we had the, the chairs going all over the show I, I i would say it's the it's the wettest trailer i've seen in 4dx it was yeah. wetter than avatar you can see our reactions to it it was a lot more intense than i was expecting for a, <laughs> for a movie like that but a really fun movie to see in 4DX, yeah, absolutely actually. the week after that is a movie i am so so excited for I know people who have seen this movie already because they saw it when it was released in America mm -hmm. uh, pre-Christmas. And I cannot wait. It speaks very much to my interests. The Iron Claw yeah. is finally getting its release here in the United Kingdom. And this is the story of the, the wrestling family, the Von Erics. It is a incredible trailer mm. and I, from what I've been told, it is a breathtaking movie because the Von Erics is a a tragic wrestling tale, a tragic wrestling family. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's kind of one of those things where it's, a, it's wrestling is what they do, but the story is, is the family dynamics and things like that. It's Zac Efron, who has kind of undergone rather a transformation in this movie, and I'm not just talking about the wig choice. Um, it's, a, it's one of the ones where I was watching the trailer for it, and I sort of prodded, and I was like, oh, it's Troy Bolton to my other half, and she was like, what? Where? Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, surprising how long it's taken for it to come out over here, but mm. that has given a lot of time to all of the reviews that have come out and all of the comments that have been made from wrestling fans, also from movie fans that have said it's one of those. I mean, classics of the genre: wrestling meets movies, sports movies. Like you know, yeah. you've got your Rockies, you've got your the wrestler. The wrestler, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm. I'm uh, with with bated breath knowing the story, <laughs> well, that's <laughs> excited a, yeah. to see the film. I did uh, so you know some wrestling friends of mine have said like I'm going to be that person that's in the cinema, and when a tragic things happen, and everyone in the cinema is like, oh, that's so sad. I'm like, oh, you haven't seen anything <laughs> yeah. yet. There is more tragedy to come with this family. Oh, gallows humor. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a, a a fun watch, but it'll be a. a I mean, an arresting watch. Yeah, and that's why I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing it because like I've. I've, I've been obsessed with the, the Von Erich family and sort of like, yeah, as a, a wrestling historian to see this up on the big screen mm -hmm. with an incredible cast as well. Yeah. Your man from the bear just looks like he is on form in this movie. Mm -hmm. And apparently like it's the standout performance in it as well. Yeah. I'm, I cannot say enough exciting things or how excited I am to go and see this. Yeah, it's my pick of the month and I haven't even picked the rest of the month yet. No, exactly. <laughs> And it is going to be half term, so you may not want to go and take your kids to go and see The Iron Claw, but maybe you look at something like Vigration or any of the other movies that are out at cinema at the moment. We have a brand new Cineworld family ticket, which will see adults still paying kids prices, but the tickets are now available for one child and one adult. So if you're someone like me who is just with one child, I can enjoy the family ticket. So you could be more childish even with the smaller family and larger groups continue to make the same savings as before. And you might hear the word child and think, oh, that's a, a small person. Mm. Eight, nine, maybe. Yeah. No. Child tickets go up to 14 years old. Oh, I, thought, oh, I was going to still qualify. No, you ju I'm just you're out. You're just on the cusp, yeah. I'm afraid. Never mind. So whether it's Mean Girls or Migration, there are loads of options to go and see with this amazing offer. Fun for all the family. But it's also February. Oh. It also means it's romance season. Oh. Love is in the air, and we are celebrating Valentine's at Cineworld Cinema. Tell me exactly how, please. We're re-releasing yep. some big, big movies to go and see with your loved one. I just saw the list over your shoulder, and I'll be honest with you, I'm excited. Les Miserables, the 2024 reissue. Notting Hill, the 25th anniversary of Notting Hill. My favourite things, the 80th anniversary of that, by the way. But the one that I'm very, very excited for... A movie I did not see until actually like the last five years or so. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't see it when it came out. Uh, my girlfriend, now wife, took me to go and see this movie because mm -hmm. it was one of her favorite movies as a teenager. She was like, I think you'll love this movie. Ten Things I Hate About You. Which is an absolute classic of the genre. It, this is, they, they, those four are brilliant choices. Even Les Mis, because you know me in a musical. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan. Uh, would I say the most romantic film? No. 
but a trip to a musical always a fun valentine's day treat 10 things i hate about you is is one of those perfect encapsulations of a time period um heath ledger at uh, his sort of like handsome best you oh, know his lovely hair in that julia movie. styles it's, it's the with her lovely hair joseph in that gordon movie. levitt it's the it's sort of a um, retelling of the of shakespeare yeah, of the Shrew. Of the Shrew, right yeah and there's a brilliant uh, i think it's either at the beginning or at the end but there's a band that you know playing some beautiful 90s music on the roof while the credits roll um there's and, and it and notting hill both feature basically exactly the same impression from me when i do a line from it which is that um in notting hill sh i'm just a girl standing in front of a boy and in 10 things i hate about you it's but the thing is i don't hate you at all and all of that so i i love these movies and i'm yeah. very very excited for this day notting hill is to my mind one of the top five rom-coms of all time that's big. Yeah, I love it. I, I, Julie Roberts is everything. She, it's Hugh Grant. At, you have that image of what Hugh Grant is, but if you look at Hugh Grant's career, it's really only Notting Hill and Four Weddings. Those are the sort of the two that he does that character in. And this Valentine's Day, you can give the gift of cinema with a Cineworld gift box for two. It is the perfect gift for couples, friends, or your significant other. Gift box for two is going to come with two standard tickets and a large combo, going to you a large hot dog, nachos, popcorn, whatever your vibe, and a large drink to share. Available in cinemas and online, and it's also available as an e-voucher straight into your email inbox. But maybe you're not in a Valentine's mood. Mm. Maybe you're a, a singleton, which yeah. is also absolutely hey, fine. And there. there are plenty of things that you can go and see as well. Bob Marley, One Love, and The Taste of Things, or go and see the latest comic book movie, Madam Web. Madam Web, which I'll be honest with you, is one that I don't know too much about. Somehow all of the Madam Web has, uh, has avoided me. So please, tell me why I'm going to see Madam Web on February the 16th. When they announced they were doing a Madam Web movie, mm -hmm. there was a little bit of a, huh. Because mm -hmm. Madam Web is an old lady. Right who is sort of an interdimensional old lady. Oh, brilliant. And that's not really the character they've done now on the big screen. Okay. She is someone who is very much connected to the Spider-Verse. Uh, there's there's so many Spider-Verse that's got sort of Venom, they've got Craven mm -hmm. the Hunter. Um, they were gonna do loads of these other ones, but I don't know how many of them are still going on. Morbius is also oh, included yeah, within this as well. But it's a basically about the series of Spider-Women. Spider, right. Spider Woman being one of them, Spider Girl being another one, Sydney Sweeney is mm -hmm. part of this cast, and it is creating four Spider Women characters that can maybe spin off into their own franchises or become a little team up and they'll do future installments down the line. Right. So this is kind of Sony planting their, their flag in the ground of being like, we need some heroes now mm -hmm. for our Spider-Verse that we're making without Spider-Man in right. it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick these four characters here. Interesting. Okay, I quite like that. And it's Dakota Johnson, isn't it? Yes. As well, is the sort of the lead in this. And she's a clairvoyant, I've, I've read right. Which is kind of on, on the lines of what Madam Web was, because yeah. she was kind of there. Like, particularly, you look at the 90s cartoon, she was there to sort of guide Spider Man and be like, Spider Man, if you don't go down these paths, you won't find these things. Ah, kind of like the woman in Lost. Um, I know. Um, yeah, I'm into that. That sounds fun. That sounds like a thing that I would actually enjoy. There were three movies there, which you might think, Phew, I don't know if I could go see all of those movies. Yeah. Well, you could become an unlimited subscriber or get the brand new Cine Saver ticket every Monday to Wednesday. All standard 2D tickets are now just $5.99 in cinema and online. And you can round up your cinema visit with our brand new early week special offer running Monday to Wednesday. You can get a small popcorn and a small drink for just five pounds. And to round out the month of February, our shortest month of the year, mm -hmm. a movie that producer Ellis, uh, cameraman Ellis, is very excited about. I am going to have to pick up my phone to get the, the this one right. Although I think Ellis is annoyed that it's going to take me this many takes to get right. I've got it. Demon Slayer, Hashira Training. No, it's to the Hashira Training. To the Hashira Training. Ha well, I've got the, the important part right. <laughs> so it's Demon Slayer, to the Hashira Training. Can I try the other bit as well, uh, if you don't mind? Demon Slayer, Kimitsu no Yabaya. Yaiba. Yaiba. Yaiba, yeah, yeah, uh, to the Hashira training. Yeah, which Plus. is uh, uh, the latest installment in the Demon Slayer anime franchise, which, you know, saw the big screen. With the, I think Mugen Train was the first that was on the big screen. It's like an extension. <laughs> Let's just look at the camera, man. Alice, to be like, Alice, tell hey, me what you need to But know. I knew that one because I went to a screening of it and I had a great time. So, uh, yeah, for the fans, if you're an anime fan, a fanime, if you will, uh, you're going to have a lovely time over at Demon Slayer Hash to the Hashira training. <laughs> Plus. 
However, you're going to find me down the corridor because I'm going to be going to see Wicked Little Letters. Mm -hmm. I love this. This is stranger than fiction based on true story yes. type, type situation where you have got a small town, mm -hmm. People there, nice and conservative, just living their lives. Well, it's the 20s, you know. Yeah. One of them's a little bit foul-mouthed. She's Irish, a bit foul-mouthed. And all of a sudden, everyone on the street starts getting letters sent to their house yeah. that are filled with profanity. Yeah. It's based on a real a real thing that happened. It kind of rocked the, the sort of quaint English towns. And it's Olivia Coleman and Jesse Buckley who uh, have acted together previously but weren't acting together in scenes, if that makes sense. They were both in, I think it was uh, the eternal daughter was the film but they've never actually worked together on screen and they were very excited to do that because they've both got uh, a similar energy um obviously olivia coleman everyone everyone loves and jesse buckley has arrived on the scene in the past few years on on the big screen in particular and shown why she's one of our mvps in in the uh, in the industry over here and she's just got this real wicked pun intended energy um that kind of draws something out of Olivia Coleman's character. It's got that very uh, quintessentially European style of comedy. Uh, and I'm wide in European, so I'm not saying it's just British because there's something about certain types of French cinema in there as well for me with, with some of the, the stagings and the deliveries. It looks everything. I'm so excited for this film. Because this is the key. So, you know, you'd think, oh, it's, it's the, the foul mouth Irish mm. one that's next door. But then a detective gets involved mm. and a mystery unravels as to who is sending these letters. Yeah. I'm going to say this in the politest way possible. And I mean this with all of the best will in the world. This looks like the sort of movie my mum will love. Yeah. And I will love going to see it with my mum. That's, a, that's the kind of movie. I look for those movies. Absolutely. Yeah. We have Pet Shop Boys Dream World that hits live on Sunday the 4th at half past three, as well as Kinky Boots the Musical oh. on Sunday the 4th at half past three. And on the 7th at 7.15, we have the Royal Ballet Live with Manon, as well as National Theatre Live's Vanya on Thursday the 22nd at 7 p.m. Do you want to just quickly talk about Kinky Boots? Because you got super yeah, excited. I didn't know we were doing that. I, Kinky Boots the musical is a, it's one, it's based on a film with Shio Taleji Paul from 2005, years and years ago. It's the story of a, a shoe factory in uh, Northampton that uh, is going out of business and they need to do something to save, mm. that, save their business. And so the thing they stumble across is making boots for drag queens. And it is a movie, uh, a musical that, that did fantastically on the West End. It's a joyous, joyous musical. It's music by Cindy Lauper. Well, the first time I saw it, I was like, is this a bit panto? Is this a bit kitsch? Is this not very... No, it's, it's full of heart. The energy is absolutely fantastic. There is a lyric right at the end of the, of the show that is... Uh, it breaks me every single time, but it breaks me in the most fantastic, like, I want to sing to the world kind of happy everyone we're all in this together kind of energy it's not taking the mick out of people who don't understand the drag scene it's also it's, it's a way of it's an open arm it's welcoming you in it's basically saying look you'll find all of us together the 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 line the thing is you change the world if you change your mind it's a fantastic show and if you get a chance you're gonna have the best night of your life at the cinema it's so much fun i love it i'll be there <laughs> you can find dan just... yeah i'll be singing along we also have an autism-friendly screening of Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom on Sunday the 4th. Pepper's Cinema Party in some sites on Half Term, which will be taking place at some Cineworld sites during the Half Term week. And a double screening of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, the 48th and a half anniversary <laughs> on Wednesday the 21st and Saturday the 24th. Thought to be their strongest movie. Yeah. I'm a Life of Brian guy, but I you know, love the Holy Grail. I'm a Holy Grail fan. I think I'm a Holy Grail fan because it's spam a lot. The musical is heavily based on, on Holy Grail. And so when I saw that, I then went and watched Holy Grail for the first time and was like, oh, this is stellar. There is a line from the Holy Grail that I use in everyday life, mm -hmm. which is, we should leave Camelot, tis a silly place. Yeah. And I just refer to, if I'm in somewhere and I'm not having a good time, or I was to my wife and I was like, Tis a silly place. Yeah. And we'll move on to the next thing. Strong. If you want to see the taste of things early, you can do on Monday the 5th and Wicked Little Letters on Monday the 19th if you're an unlimited card holder with our unlimited screenings. And we are celebrating sci-fi season, kicking things off with 
2001 A Space Odyssey on Tuesday the 6th, and a 2021 reissue of June on Friday the 9th through to Sunday the 11th. Get yourselves ready for June Part 2. And Interstellar's 10th anniversary is celebrated also in IMAX on Tuesday the 13th. On Tuesday the 20th, you can go and see Blade Runner, the final cut at 7pm, and then followed up with Blade Runner 2049 on Monday the 26th at 7pm. I think going to see June is a good time to do that with June part two coming oh, yeah. up very, very soon. Also, you can go and see the, the definitive cut, you might say, of Blade Runner. Yeah. Is it my favorite cut of the movie? I don't know. I've, mm. I've got my faves in, in various different places. But the final cut is like, this is the version of this movie. And 2049, which then came out and, and had Destiny Villeneuve, who I absolutely, I mean, June part two coming out, it's, that's also Denis. He knows what he's doing. And I have a, a lot of fondness for 2049 because it came out at a very interesting period of my life. And I love the aesthetic of it all. The cast did a really good job. Yeah, so that's going to be a good little double bill. And 2001 A Space Odyssey is my friend's favorite movie of all time just a little classic there that isn't it's a wonderful life <laughs> he he's, he always told me there are only two perfect five star movies and that is it's a wonderful life and 2001 a space odyssey unfortunately missed off spice world but that's fine it's fine you know i told him he missed off kong skull island well there you go but i'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this edition of what's on at city world cinemas you can check out all of the movies that we've discussed today using the links in the video description down below and if you're a fan of this sort of thing but perhaps you want to fall asleep listening to our dulcet tones you can find us on the podcast realms wherever you get your podcast from so we'll see you next month for what's on at city world cinemas i've been luke owen and i'm still dan Layton. and that's what's on